of them that I remember off the top of my head was actually this one, the Chanel Soleil Cream Bronzer, right? And right next to it, so in the description, it said, it said Chanel Soleil Cream Bronzer, not CF, will not be linked. So I, of course, knowing that she's from Canada, and naturally, it's, everything's about, you know, her living in Canada, apparently, um, I read that as Chanel Soleil Cream Bronzer, not Canada friendly, will not be linked. <laughs> and like, I read this over and over again. What does that even mean? Like, what? What, what is that like a phrase I don't know like me I'm like you know being Google theoretics here typing and trying to figure everything out and then it occurred to me Paige <laughs> it's not uh, Canada friendly it's uh, cruelty free <laughs> so you know for those of you that wanted to know CF typically stands for cruelty free not Canada friendly you're welcome Hey guys, welcome back. So for today's video, we are actually starting a brand new video series on this channel. Um, it's something different than I've ever done before and it actually centers around other YouTubers. Now, these might be YouTubers that I've talked to you guys about that you know that I watch, some that you have no idea I watch. I watch people that have anywhere from, you know, a following around my size, which is right around 20K, um, all the way up to over 4 million. So it really is a wide range. It's not like I'm just picking out, you know, like this person has a million, this person has, you know, this size, or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm very open to more so pursuing people, personality, and the content they present to me rather than like, oh, this is their number. This is clearly what I'm after. I'm not excluding anyone based on, you know, how many people watch them, what their engagement is, or, you know, their products, anything like that. And I thought based on all of that, this person would be a perfect way to kick off this series. And as you already saw in the thumbnail, as well as in the uh, title of the video, obviously we are talking today about Samantha Ravindal. And she is a YouTuber that I have watched for quite some time. I didn't watch her at the beginning of my channel. Um, I would say I've watched her more so in probably the last year and a half, and especially in like the last three-ish months, like something clicked and I just went back to her channel and I started watching all of her videos that were newer that I had missed. And this video series, while it will include, you know, some of their favorite makeup and their application and that sort of thing, it isn't just about that for me. You know, it, it also goes farther. I want to tell you what I love about them and, and why I love it like why I appreciate something, whether it's their technique, their personality, the way that they phrase certain things, um, just their, their overall being. Like, I, I want to go farther than just the makeup. Although, you know, spoiler alert, obviously for today's video, I am going to be talking about some of her favorite products, which some of them I have tried before. Some of them I picked up fresh and they are brand new for today's video. And some of them I had to replace with other products because, you know, <laughs> shipping situations right now are just not ideal. Really, that's what this series is all about. You know, it's not just about like me sitting here like, oh my god yes holy cow like fangirling over somebody because that like omg girl that's just not who i am um obviously but i still wanted to find a way that i thought was cool and different and a way that i could kind of incorporate the people that i watch and why they mean something to me to you guys and again it convey whether it's their personality their makeup you know tips and tricks and that sort of stuff like whatever it is that i've gleaned from these people and share it with you and and make this platform a more enjoyable place like let's be honest it hasn't hasn't always been the most enjoyable and just I don't know like spreading that more of an uplifting kind of vibe that's really all this video is so let's go ahead I'm going to I think zoom the camera in a freckle and we can go ahead and get started okay so we're up close and personal and normally when I start doing my makeup I always focus on complexion first but Sam actually does her eyes first and for today while I am focusing on a more neutral look with some of her like lighter-esque products um, I'm still gonna start off and do my makeup the same way she does which is to again start start off with the eyes, obviously. So I'm going to go in first and create a light little base with one of her favorite products, and that is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I have mine. I just almost stabbed myself right in the fucking eye. Oh my god. Um, she she uh, uses hers in a different shade. I use the shade Birch because I'm pastier than um, paper. Samantha Ravindal always uses or almost always uses a brush of some sort to like apply, uh, apply stuff to her lids. I know, what a crazy concept. Um, and I'm like one of those people that I like to use my fingers. I love that I just made that sound like a club. Like, I'm one of those people. Uh, but I am. The moral of the story is that I actually purchased a brush. This is from Real Techniques. This is their expert concealer for concealer brush. Thank you, Real Techniques, for um, specifying that. But I actually bought a brush to use this on my eyeballs because I didn't really have anything that would work with this because I've just never done it. Now that the concealer's on, I'm going to do two things, both of which I do think Samantha Ravindal does when she goes for like that more lighter makeup-esque life. So I'm going to, first thing, set down the lid, which mainly through the crease is what I care about. I'm just going to take a little hourglass powder here um, on my Kaleidos H1 brush. 
and I'm just going to lightly kind of sweep that all over. And then the second thing I want to do is just grab a little bit of bronzer. This is the Hourglass Diffuse Bronze Light. Now, this is not her favorite bronzer. She likes the nude bronze one, and I don't have that bronzer. So I'm going to use this one and uh, run this through the crease really quickly, and then we'll actually get to, like, talking about what I, what I actually want to talk about. Dear God, I feel like there's so much preface that goes into this. Also, Samantha Ravendahl actually has eyebrows. I wonder what that's like <laughs> because I don't. Okay, Sam. So if you could maybe just stop teasing me with your beautiful, fabulous eyebrows, that would be great. All right. So from here, we're actually going to introduce a product that um, she has talked about how much she loves several times and I have not tried. So this is one of those, like, I'm going to try something new because she said it's really good. And if it's not really good, I'm actually going to resent her for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. So this is from Charlotte Tober. This is her Eyes to Mesmerize Long Lasting Eye Color in the shade Marie Antoinette. And I, I could have put that in the garbage, but we all know that that's just not going to happen. Oh God, that's so satisfying. Can you see that little peanut butter point right there? Just like living its best life. Oh my God. That noise I just made was not satisfying. It was, it was not acceptable for any of us. Also, here's a swatch of it. I almost just wiped it off without even showing you because apparently that's the headspace I'm in right now. Um, that's a be beautiful, beautiful color. Um, she did this eye look that I'm doing right now, just like a really chill type situation. In one of her last videos, I think it was her reading Sephora comments or meaning reading mean Sephora comments about some of my favorite makeup or whatever. And I really loved the look that she came up with. Like it was super easy, really nice, soft eye look, but so like, like dimensional had a lot of sparkle to it and in it she talked about this which like I said I've never tried before and then she talked about this as well which I'm also going to be using today this is the hourglass scattered light glitter eyeshadow in the shade smoke and these I absolutely love and I've used them so many times and oh my god this is one of my favorite colors too here's a little swatch of hourglass right there and here is obviously again the Charlotte Tilbury one like can you just imagine so, I mean you're not going to have to imagine for much longer because I'm I'm actually going to shut the hell up and put them on my face. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I just wanted to give you all of that information so I can actually talk about what I want to talk about, um, which is to be determined, quite frankly, because I have, <laughs> I have no idea. So let's go ahead and uh, get into doing that, which again, she uses a brush for this part and I should have thought this all the way through to where I needed a brush right now. Okay. So what if we just like wipe off that concealer brush? idea. Yes. Okay. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to take with that, again, that concealer brush I wiped off here and go in first to the Marie Antoinette shade. I'm going to pick up some of that, which I feel like that's a lot of product I just grabbed. Okay. Um, we're going to just like start applying this all over the lid. Okay. I have to admit there is something very satisfying about applying stuff like this with a brush. Can I just say that is blending out like a damn dream. I will wear this just like every day as an all over lid color. This is, this is so beautiful and it blends out so easily. Oh my God. I said I was going to talk about Sam. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Sam. Um, let's go ahead and, um, let's talk about her. So a couple of things. Number one, I would say like the chief thing that I love about her that I really like, I appreciate and I'm being dead serious right now. Like this isn't meant to be a joke at all. Um, I have a really hard time, especially lately with just like everything that's going on, not only, you know, in the world, obviously, but like also, um, in like my personal world and my personal realm, if you will. Um, I have a really hard time like slowing down and I feel like watching her videos and like watching the way that she approaches YouTube and just, she has like that thing about her. And I feel like long and short of it, you're like, Paige, get to the, get to the fucking point. Um, I feel like the way that she is on camera, like she has this calmness about her and to her, it probably doesn't seem as nearly as calm as it seems to somebody like me, but watching her videos and like just watching how she is so unapologetically herself, I feel like it's just really helped me to do the same, to just like calm down, to be me and to just realize like Paige, it's okay to, you know, like breathe a little more, to, to talk a little less or to show a little bit more application, you know, have longer videos even like her. I'm just going to wipe this off of my hand, by the way, because yet again, I, I went to play with the hourglass one and I realized Paige, you're in the same position. You don't have a different brush. So I'm just going to like wipe this off and then go with the hourglass. Anyways. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes. So the way that she is and like her whole mindset and whatever, like the way that she presents, even her videos, I have a really hard time doing what she does and watching 
seeing how like when, when Sam creates a video, if it's naturally a longer video and like she spends 15 minutes explaining, you know, this one foundation or this one eyeshadow or whatever, like she doesn't care. She's just who she is and she leaves it that way. And like, she just, she doesn't give a shit. And that's like one of my biggest problems that I've had to almost, I've watched her channel to like encourage myself that when I'm editing, I don't have to like X out and like take out all the footage of like me talking about this one product. Like it's okay to have a video that's 30 minutes long. It's okay to put up the content that like you want to put up because as a YouTube like ask person, and I say that so loosely because truthfully, I, half the time I don't even feel like a YouTuber, like if I'm being honest, but I say this because um, it, there's so much pressure when you're putting up a video because YouTube tells you like, oh, the analytics are this and oh, the analytics are that. And it can be really difficult and like a really daunting thing when um, you're looking, oh dear God, that's beautiful too. Like I already knew I loved that, but like, oh my God, the lighting right now, by the way, outside, absolute shit. <laughs> like it's so, it's actually gray out every single window, just straight up gray. Just fun fact for me to you. But uh, this looks beautiful and I hope you can at least see somewhat how beautiful, like I'm gonna hit the light with it. Look at that. Ugh, so good. That was a good face. Ugh. Uh, but what was I saying? For example, yeah, the I'm looking it up on her channel right now. That reading Sephora reviews of her favorite products, it was 47 minutes and nine seconds. Wow, I just had a really hard time saying that. But 47 minutes and nine seconds. And then before that, like two videos before that, she did a Revolve video. She's it says I spent $428 on makeup from Revolve, and it's just a video about like those five products. It's 37 minutes long, and again. It's only about like five products that are new and she doesn't care like she puts up the content She wants to put up put up the content that she feels is beneficial for her and her audience And I just I really appreciate that which speaking of you know some things moving quicker and some things not um, I'm gonna pull a Samantha right now and go do my eyebrows off of camera This is something that she does literally all the time in her videos Which I think for Sam because she has like more like naturally full brows She can get away with you know doing a little less going in with less product, but for me I have to who are we kidding go in and literally create brows so I'm gonna go do that really quickly uh, come back on camera and then we can keep talking about Sam Yay! All right, guys, so I am back. I have some ill-fitting brows onto my face, and we are going to um, keep going through this with some other True Blue Samantha Loving products. And from here, we actually have one that I purchased because of her, and I have been using for, I would say, about a week now, and that is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. Now, this is in the shade Light to Medium, and I have heard her talk about this relentlessly well. There, there are cat hairs in there. That's cool. Um, but I've heard her talk about this for quite some time now. She absolutely loves this product. And I was very, very skeptical because like truth be told, I never use anything like this. Like anything that involves under eye work before my concealer, which is also work on my under eye. Um, I just am always like, bitch, ain't nobody got time for that. Like that is not my business. But I saw her use this so much and rave about it. And I love the way it looked on her. So I had to take the plunge and test it out for myself and guys, this is absolutely fantastic so far. Like, again, I've only been using it for about a week, um, but the consistency, the coverage you get with this alone is beautiful. Like, if you want a no makeup makeup day, this is great. Um, I'm gonna be applying this here with another expert concealer brush, which I didn't even realize. I bought the same brush for both of those things. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna be using this and uh, just dipping it right in here with all of the either lint or cat hair, I'm honestly not sure. And I'm just gonna pick up a small amount of product because one thing that I've learned both from watching her and in using this myself is that a little bit of this product goes a very long way. Um, and I think if you use too much of it, it can actually build up and have a little bit more of like a sticky consistency to it. I also go in and just lightly pat it out with my finger and like press it in. I always use my ring finger because y'all know this is, well, this is, this is Beyonce. Um, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> this is the most gentle finger, or so they say. Um, so it's always the one that you should use around your eyes. And look at the difference between that little tiny bit of color corrector and this side that has nothing on it. Like, it's actually bizarre to me how well this not only works, but how, like, canceling and brightening it is all at the same time. 
Like, this is one of my new favorite products, and I just, oh my god, like, that looks so beautiful. Anyways, with that good and blended out, now I'm gonna go in with some of this Hourglass Concealer. Again, it's still in the shade Birch, the same one that I've been using a lot. You guys have seen me use it a ton, and um, this is, I, like, oh god, it's such a beautiful concealer. Um, I love it by itself. I love it over this stuff, this uh, Becca Under Eye Corrector. I think it's beautiful either way. I'm also gonna go through, just while I'm talking here, and I'm lightly spot concealing, and uh, what I do is I, I like to apply just a a little bit of that concealer um, and, and then I'll go in and like use the sponge to really like blend it into the skin and it does remove a little bit of the coverage but it just helps deaden that redness a little bit and it looks really nice anyways one of the things that um uh, did I blend all those? Yes, I did. I'm like trying to make sure that I blended everything in. I can barely see myself. It's so gray outside right now. And without my glasses on, I'm just like, what? I literally can't see anything. Um, but one of the things that I just appreciate so much as an adult who has like hormonal cystic acne, you know, like from my brain tumor and, and from life and all that stuff. Um, I, I really just appreciate the fact that she's not, you know, someone out here like perpetuating this this whole like oh every you, you have to have full coverage like if you have blemishes they just have to be perfectly covered and that whole thing because truthfully like that mindset I just feel like there's nothing wrong with wanting full coverage there's nothing wrong with wanting light coverage like wh whatever you want is totally fine and I think in the end that's what's important like whatever you want is you know what you need to feel for your for your skin and for your complexion and your confidence and all of that she still she still presents herself the way she wants to be presented and uses products that she loves uses them the way she likes her makeup to look and she just has like a very like I don't give a fuck man like whatever I want is what's gonna happen type attitude and I really like that and I think it's important for um younger younger boys and girls that are you know coming up into this world and that are watching influencers I just think it's so important that they have someone like that and even though people like me you know we might say it and and I use tinted moisturizers and tinted shit all the time on my channel um but I I don't have the follow and I don't have the reach that someone like her does and it's just so good to see it from someone that does have that reach and they do have that influence like it's just I don't know it just makes me really happy to see that and I just, I, I don't know, I can't explain it any better. I just, I really appreciate it because again, as someone, which by the way, really quickly, as I keep talking, I can I can talk while I apply, but I'm gonna be going in um, with my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. Now, I'm using this because I tried to get my hands, which again, with shipping and everything, not happening, but I tried to get my hands on one of her newer favorites, which I think is the Tarte um, Maracuja Oil Tinted Moisturizer or whatever. Um, I'm gonna be testing that out here on my channel at some point, probably in the next week to two weeks, so stay tuned. But for today, for this video, I'm still gonna be using a tinted product in honor of Sam, uh, but it's going to be this one, which is one of my absolute favorites. I really like the, the texture, the shine, like everything about this is beautiful. I just went through, by the way, and like blended some of that concealer down with that, um, that tinted moisturizer just to make everything blend together because I just sat here for like 10 minutes, not talking to anybody, not, not really doing anything, but like this. And there was it what? Okay. So really quickly, I need to tell you that I have to set my under eye. Um, I know Sam doesn't often do this, um, but I have to because I have the creasy under eye bags of a 77 year old uh, human being. So I have to, I've got to just handle this really quickly. Um, so we're just going to set it a little bit of hourglass powder, nothing crazy. I'm not going like super intense with it, but like, honey, I have to, I'm so sorry. Oh yeah. Just get, get a little bit of that powder in there. I know that the powder is like the devil in the Ravendall world. But, uh, oh yeah, which is also something I should mention. Um, Samantha Ravendahl has like painfully dry skin. I believe that's what she calls it. And um, I have like combo leaning oily skin. So that being said, there's obviously going to be like points in this video where, um, you know, things have to change. And just, I'm putting it out there just in case, you know, I, I have those people that are like, oh my God, like Sam doesn't set her under eyes. Well, okay. Um, does Sam have crevasses that are literally six foot deep? Like I could bury a fully ass grown man in these things. So like, I'm gonna Carol Baskin some Somebody and then just like shove it in my under eye bag. Is that what you want to see? Absolutely not. So maybe you should just like be nicer to me. Also, I've never seen Tiger King. So Carol Baskin's like the bad one, right? Never saw it. Didn't, didn't care about it. Truthfully, don't care about anything that that show has like said or any meme that I've seen. But I know like Carol Baskin killed her husband. Like she whacked him, right? <laughs> I, I truthfully don't know. Um, but moral of the story. I have to use setting powder. 
so what's next, Paige? It's, it's time to focus on another product. I, guys, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so I took just a second and I did zoom the camera out because as I've said before, it is painfully gray outside right now. And my camera, it's like making me look gray. So I need to like get some distance in here to hopefully create light, which I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but like, we at least have to try. But moving on to the next few steps, we are going to start focusing on cream products, which I love that I say that like almost everything else I've used hasn't, hasn't been a cream. But uh, Samantha Ravindahl loves her some good cream products. Now, I don't have her favorite, one of her favorite cream bronzers is the, um, I wanna say the milk one. It's like a, like a twist up. And I don't have that, but I do have, <laughs> I do have something uh, else. And that would be the Chanel Soleil cream bronzer. Now this is one that I have used a ton. And and she used in one of her recent videos. Um, it's not like her favorite or anything. Like she truthfully, I don't even know that she like liked the undertone in the end. I'm really not sure. I can't remember, but um, she did use it. And therefore I am also <laughs> going to use it. And that's the bar that we have officially set. Okay. You may be asking yourself if you are a true Samantha Ravindahl fan, Paige, what are you going to use to apply that cream product that you had right there in your hands? And to that, I would answer and tell you, I did in fact pick up the Samantha Ravindahl Avondale brush, the e.l.f. Uh, Precision Airbrush Stipple Brush. I think this used to be like formerly known as the e.l.f. 105 maybe. And this is one of the items on her channel that she talks about um, all the time. So I, I think this is the right brush. I'm hoping it is. And this is what we're going to be using for application today. Sam, all I have to say to you is that um, this better be worth it, okay? Because I bought two of them. One for this uh, bronzer right here and then another one just in case I loved it as much as you do. Um, so that way I actually have it in my possession. So I have one here, I have one here, and I am like ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and swirl the uh, elf around in this Chanel situation. And dare I say, this has an entire cat slash maybe a dog like literally sitting in it. Um, and I just like cleaned this out. Like I scraped it with a spoolie to like clean it. Like, do my cats just like use this when I'm not home? Seriously, like what's happening? Oh, Samantha. You might be onto something with this brush. Um, I like that I've officially graduated to the point in our relationship where I'm just calling her Samantha. Eventually, maybe I'll just call her Sam because that sounds a lot less creepy. But uh, this brush, this is divine. Also, look at how good that looks on my schnoz. Oh my God, my schnoz. That's something I only say off of camera, my schnoz. But seriously, look at how good that looks. <laughs> Like this brush, this is, dude, this is, this is nice. I like this. Oh, wow. All right, so a couple of things we need to um, deal with. It's literally so dark in here now that I can barely see myself. So I have to like try to find a way. Oh, that's, gee, I wonder if this is gonna be a problem. What do you guys think? Is that gonna cause like a, a viewing situation? I, I don't know. So I don't know if that made any difference at all, but like, guys, it's so dark. Wait, what if I like, what if I like lean in a little bit? What I wouldn't give for Michigan to believe in light. <laughs> like it would just be wonderful. So next up, we're on to blush. Now, this is a product that I did buy at her recommendation, and I'm really, really excited to use it. Now, this is a very, very expensive cream blush, and I've never even like heard of this brand prior to her, and I don't remember even how to say it. The brand is could could what um kajar wise i am so butchering that guys i would just like to say i am uh from northern michigan and so like you're lucky that i can say basic words correctly okay we we're taught words like chimely for chimney and pumpkin and library and oh my god just saying those makes me cringe so i just i just want to like put that in perspective okay if i say things incorrectly just really, you know, keep it, keep, keep your expectations lower. Uh, Northern Michigan right here, like born, raised, lived my entire life. Not that that's an excuse, but also I'm going to use it as an excuse. So, um, this is, this is that cream blush from that brand, which again, everything will be linked down below. And I have this in the shade blossoming. Yes. Blossoming. And I guess the deal with this and the holy bejesus, she is not kidding. This is like a very luxe blush. Like, oh my God, guys, this literally hold on. I need to, I'm sorry. We need to just have a discussion. This right here weighs more than this hour. It weighs like probably three of this hourglass palette. Um, it weighs, it weighs probably triple what this hourglass setting powder weighs. Here's actually like a fair comparison. This is my Zoeva foundation. I've used roughly like a quarter of it. And this is probably still like heavier than this is like glass component and the liquid inside all together and this is still like way heavier than even like almost a full foundation uh with a glass packaging around it and the pump so just something to keep in mind like the packaging on this is very luxe oh this color 
Oh yeah, look at like me. I'm like a salmon queen right now. That is the most delightful salmon pink. I'm just gonna dip in a little bit of this on my Fenty sponge, like dip right into it. She said, I wanna say maybe this is like the shade that she wore on her wedding or something. Again, she talked about it in one of her more recent videos. Wow, I didn't need quite that much, but also maybe I did need that much. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh golly, wow. This is, <laughs> this is gorgeous, okay. I love this. All right, guys, so I just took the plunge and went back into my account, and this blush is, in fact, $56. So obviously it is on the uh, pricey side. I mean, if you can even call that the pricey side. But two things to mention. Number one, the actual compact itself, like this metal, um, I don't know exactly what it's made out of because my phone, for the literal love of God, will not work um, so because there's just, like, no reception in my life. Like, welcome to northern Michigan. But the material of this, moral of the story, I think it's made of, like, some really, like, a nice or some special material metal or whatever and uh, the compact itself is actually designed to be reusable because once this is empty like the the tray of blush is empty you can actually poke it out there's a hole in the back and uh, you can replace it so they have refill options for these little trays um, so it's also like kind of an eco-friendly type option now like I said before I do have to cheat a little bit um, because my my face is more combo leaning oily and even though I'm not going to be wearing this makeup for like a crazy amount of time or anything I still want to go through and like use some other products and do my makeup how I would normally do it. So I'm going to go in and set my face with just a little bit of this hourglass powder. This is their ambient lighting powder in ethereal light. And I'm going to use this mainly to like set down these areas because I am going to be blending a couple more products on top of them. But then I also need to lightly set down the T-zone. But I am going to be cheating on some of these products. Like, for example, I know that as, like, a general rule of thumb, um, Samantha Ravendahl really likes Hourglass products. So you're going to be seeing a few of those kind of come out of the woodwork, um, starting with <laughs> starting with the next two products because, <laughs> look at me, I'm like, the cheating's starting now. Um, but she mentioned that in her Hourglass video that there were some shades of Hourglass that she really enjoyed for bronzer and for blush. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it, I don't have either of those. But I do have this... This bronzer like I used to set the crease this is the diffused bronze light bronzer and for today because I have on that Chanel bronzer this is just a little bit too dark and I'm actually gonna be focusing out of this palette this is the ambient lighting edit volume 4 palette now I don't think you can get this palette anymore which I know is incredibly irritating but I'm gonna be using for bronzer a combination of these two shades and then for blush I'm gonna be going in with this one right here just because it has like that little pop to it okay so now going from here here. She has some other products listed. I like made a list of other stuff that she uses and she has other items and they are either items that I don't have or items that like I just couldn't get my hands on in time to do this video. Um, so moving in for highlight, I believe that she really likes the Glossier highlight and she likes a Glossier mascara, which neither of those I have, but <laughs> they're not even close to similar, but I am going to use something that I've been enjoying. So first off, <laughs> listen to me. I'm like, but I I'm gonna use something I like, so that's something totally new. Okay. Okay. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about highlight because as I said before, I don't have the one that she would use, but I do have a new option that I just picked up recently. This is from Chantikai. And I talked about this in my Bergdorf Goodman video, like the, it was a haul slash try on, which I'll link up here. And in that video, I bought this, obviously this is the uh, Chantikai Luminescent Eye Shade in the shade Cheetah. And guys, I have been using this so much as a highlight. And one of the things that I've learned about Sam and like, you know, kind of how she she does her makeup. I am someone that tends to reach for like ultra like intense highlights. Like I I swear to you even on a day where I'm like, "Oh, CC cream, like I want to look normal." I have to struggle then not to reach for like the most intense ridiculous highlight of my life, and I don't even know why. Like the two do not match, and I am one of the worst offenders of that, and I know it. But the things that I love about Sam is that she's um not like that like at all. Um she has a really good balance of if she does like lighter coverage makeup, she goes with a less intense highlight and she kind of um very her products based on that and that's something that I'm trying to get better at because more often than not I find that I'm like that kid that like oh shiny like I, I always just want the shiny even if I don't need it and if the look doesn't call for it I'm still like ooh shiny and so I'm trying to get past that so today I'm going to be using this which does have more of a payoff to it um, and it is an eyeshadow so something to keep in mind you're not going to find this with the highlights um, there is the shade right there it's absolutely beautiful something that I learned about this is that you really can work with the amount of shine 
design that it has. I go in with this by itself after I've let like all of my setting spray and everything dry down, my face is back to being, you know, normal. It can um, make the, um, the intensity of it a lot less, but it still has like a beautiful amount of shine to it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And this is the BH Studio Pro 18 brush. I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a little bit of this. Again, I'm not gonna go super crazy with it. And see what I mean? Like it's, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And it's like a nice amount of shine. And I think on camera, it's like a little bit more intense than it is in real life. Cause in real life it looks actually pretty natural. Like it looks more of like a glowy type feel on the cheek. Now from here, obviously I'm gonna go ahead and get into lashes, which like I said, she does false lashes and likes the Glossier mascara. And I don't wear uh, false lashes and I also don't have the Glossier mascara. So I'm gonna be using <laughs> what I have or slash what I like. And I don't know where that is. I don't, I really like truly, I don't know where that is. Hello. I'm gonna settle on my Lancome Monster Monsoor Big Mascara. Monsoor Big. Sounds, sounds a little bit dirty, Monsoor Big. Anyways, let's go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about this, shall we? Um, I was getting ready for this video, prepping as a lot of, you know, like filming people do. And one of the things I wanted to make sure of was that I had the right shades for like, you know, her favorites, you know, whether it was the blush and bronze or whatever. I just wanted to have everything in front of me so I could pull all the products. So I was going through her channel and um, screenshotting her video description boxes just so that way I could um, make sure that I had the products and whatnot screenshotting them and then that way when I came back here I could kind of flip back and forth and just make sure that I was grabbing everything that was you know what she uses so I'm doing this right and some of the uh, products that were listed had a little notation next to them them that I remember off the top of my head was actually this one the Chanel Soleil cream bronzer right and right next to it so in the description it said it said Chanel Soleil cream bronzer not CF will not be linked so I of course knowing that she's from Canada and naturally it's, it, everything's about, you know, her living in Canada, apparently. Um, I read that as Chanel Soleil Cream Bronzer, not Canada friendly, will not be linked. <laughs> and like, I read this over and over again. So you can imagine then that as I'm sitting there after just reading that it's not Canada friendly, like I'm trying to figure out like, what is Canada friendly? What does that even mean? Like what? What, what is that like a phrase I don't know like me I'm like you know being Google theoretics here typing and trying to figure everything out and then it occurred to me Paige <laughs> it's not uh, Canada friendly it's a uh, cruelty free <laughs> so you know for those of you that wanted to know CF typically stands for cruelty free not Canada friendly you're welcome. All right, so it's officially time to move on to lips, which this category is probably gonna shock you more than most others because I had two items in my possession. Now, the one I did not think I would have and the other I did not think I would ever use. So first up, we're gonna talk lip liner and this one is from MAC. It is their Whirl lip liner and I did not think I had this still in my collection. Like I used, oh God, I need to sharpen this. I need to like sharpen away the nasties. I haven't used this lip liner in so long and I didn't, oh God, I seriously didn't even think I had this. Also, let's go ahead really quickly and just like remove that awful foundation butthole lip we have going on. And uh, now we can line our lips with the Whirl Lip Liner from MAC, which, oh, fun fact, I believe this was also another item that was not in fact Canada friendly or cruelty free, which again, I now know, lovely. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and talk about lipstick. Now this, <laughs> this lipstick is one that she mentioned in one of her more recent videos. And in it, she said like, I really shouldn't tell you guys this because I don't want to give you advice on whether or not you should use it, but the color is divine. These are her words. And so I sat there and I'm like, what could she be using? And it was none other than one of the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks and guys, she was right. The color on her was truly divine. So I kind of went back and forth because I, I never actually put these to my lips. Like the end of it is still new and shiny. Um, I, I did go through and I believe pluck out, <laughs> pluck out a couple of hairs. Mm. Um, but I never actually used it. So I have no idea like if my lipsticks were okay other than that. I don't know if they had the weird balls in it. Like I don't know any of that. But I thought for today, for this video, we would at least dive in and give it a plunge. I am going to mirror what Samantha Ravendell says. Just because I'm doing it does not mean I advise you to do it. If there is something weird in yours, if they don't make you comfortable, like if it makes you feel any sort of way, do not use yours. Like I don't want anybody to get hurt. I know that some people found like some weird shit in theirs and like I just, I, I don't want to encourage that. You know, if it makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. But this is the shade As If, and I had it in my collection, and it's the same one she used, and it just looked beautiful. So I'm going to do it, guys. Oh, God, I'm so nervous. Okay. Okay. Nothing? Nothing weird? Mm, yeah. Okay, the texture? 
<laughs> the texture of it is a little questionable, that's fair. I'm only gonna use that much, just enough to lighten up the center of the lip. And then I'm gonna go through and blend and just make sure that the lip liner and that come together nicely. Now over that, just because I love gloss and I'm extra, like this wasn't in any of her videos, but I just, I can't help myself. Um, I'm gonna throw on some of the Wayne Goss new lip gloss here. This is in the shade Petunia. It's just one that I have sitting on top, but I'm not going to uh, put it directly to my lips because if we're being honest, I just put that Jaclyn Hill <laughs> lipstick on and I don't want to contaminate this if that's a thing. And obviously we all know that like Samantha Ravindahl, she's all about like the glossy, shiny moments of life. So I don't think she would be like against a gloss right now. I'm pretty sure she would like cheer me on for this decision. So like, well done. And all right, you guys, that is the full face all complete. Um, I do have a couple of things that I want to say to kind of wrap everything up, like wrap up the video, but I want to start off first with the up close so you guys can see how all of this is looking. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw that up and I'm gonna just kind of talk about it. So first things first, I really like my complexion right now. I feel like even though my acne is coming through and you know, you can still see that redness and whatnot, I still feel like my skin has like a beautiful, glowy, healthy look to it. And that has been one of my favorite, favorite ways to wear my makeup as of late. And I love that the eye look is still like nicer. It's on the light side, but it still has like that beautiful um, dimension to it. Like it's a light type of dimension but it's still there. It's still very glittery and gorgeous. And so with that being said, I love the products that she recommended, the new ones that I picked up for today's video. Um, the cream blush and that Charlotte Tilbury eye thing are gorgeous. I will, this eye thing, like I can just tell you right now, I'm going to be using this all the time because that was so easy. It blended in like a freaking dream. And I'm just, I'm a really big fan of that consistency. It's almost like a whipped kind of consistency. So it blends out very nicely. Um, and again, the cream blush is beautiful. The, uh, the Becca under eye corrector I've been using for a while now that's also beautiful and uh, even even the elf brush that I use like that's that's beautiful too like I had no issues with anything from today's video it all went very well um so so that's good you know as far as the makeup and the complexion and whatnot that's wonderful but from here I would like to take a little segue just really quickly um and and talk to you guys you know just to kind of wrap everything up I am really glad that I started this video with Sam and um with this full face of makeup because I feel like it really um embodies not only how far I've come but also the direction that I hope to go in. I'm not just talking about, you know, like the coverage on the makeup or how she likes to apply it or the fact that she likes dewy makeup because she has dry skin. Like for me, it goes farther than that. It's the fact that, you know, she's she's comfortable with the longer videos and she's comfortable with the pauses on the mic and she's comfortable with just like taking her time and, and, and being completely 100% herself. And it just means a lot because like I know in real life, Sam also really struggles with anxiety and she has a hard time. You know, I, I would imagine not being being anxious as the name would imply. And um, it, it means a lot because like I know her behind the scenes probably looks very different than she does on camera. And so in this moment, I'm not only able to say like, hey, just so you know, like you encourage me to slow down and to try to like work on myself. And I'm hoping that in turn that tells her like, hey, you, what you're doing is encouraging and, and keep up, you know, the good work. And I know that it's probably really hard for you, but I hope that this is encouraging. Like it, it's a two-way street. And with this entire video series, like I said at the beginning, I want this to be something where we can encourage each other, whether it's me to you guys at home or me to other influencers. With this, that's really what I'm trying to do. I, I want to be able to sit here and make the beauty realm better than what it is. And even if that's that's me sitting here watching videos where the creators, like the people that are inspiring me, even if they never see them, whether it's Samantha Ravindahl or the next person I do one on, even if they never see them, I, I want to be able to point out the good in other people. And it, by encouraging them and, and uplifting in that way, I hope that it, it means something to you guys. But you guys, that's it. That's the end of the video. And I can't thank you enough for watching and for hanging in there. Um, if you like this video, if you'd like to see more of them, please let me know down below if there is another person that you would like to see me do one of these videos on. Please let me know that as well down below. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a couple of people in mind. But of course, I want to hear from you guys first. So leave me all of your um, thoughts, opinions, whatnot down below. Uh, if you haven't checked me out yet, Instagram and on Twitter, those will both be linked in the description. And per usual, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please be sure to do that before you leave. I put up three new videos a week, or at least I try to. Um, they go up around 7 a.m. my time. Guys, I think that that is everything. I thank you all again so much for watching. And I hope that you all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.
Oh, my knees. Okay, one and two and three. Oh, oh my God, the wiggles. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I want to know something really great. That, like for those of you, just for those of you that stay till the bloopers, okay, this is special content. Um, when I was younger, I was in an advanced bio class in high school and that song from the wiggles, that like head, shoulders thing, that came out and I was learning in advanced biology. I was learning about the, uh, the parts of the body, like the bones. And I rewrote that song with... Uh, Cranium, clavicle, patellophalanges, patellophalanges. <laughs> Cranium, clavicle, patellophalanges, patellophalanges. <laughs> oh my god, I thought I forgot about that until just now. Okay, so there's my trip down uh, memory lane. I hope that you all enjoyed it. <laughs> I need to go get a nap. Good night. Good night.